This morning in Wellness Wednesday, a growing group of people who are embracing romantically unattached. Our special anchor Maria Shriver got an inside look at the solo pride movement. Good morning. Good morning. I love this. Well, in our country, nearly 50% of adults are single. Think about that. That's over 125 million people. And if you're one of them, you may have experienced the stigma being made to feel like there's something wrong with you. Well, there's a new movement that is absolutely trying to rewrite this narrative and turning the solo life into something to be proud of. Welcome to Singles Night with a twist. At this mixer, singles aren't looking for a date or romantic connection. Instead, they're here to celebrate being solo and unattached. And leading this movement is 51-year-old Peter McGraw. What is the biggest misconception about being single in today's society? This belief that singles are sad and lonely. And all of the data and all of the experience that I've had suggests that most of them are not. McGraw is a behavioral economist. He says he dates a lot, but has never been married. He says he loves his single life. And to spread the word, he created the solo community online, even turning it into a popular podcast. Welcome to Solo. Is there a difference between someone who's solo and someone who's single? Absolutely. So a single person is embarrassed. They feel incomplete. And a solo person feels proud of where they are in their life. They don't feel less than in any way. And this isn't just a club for lifelong bachelors. McGraw says two thirds of his followers are in fact women. Proud solos like 29 year old Simone Johnson. More and more people in my generation are single and we are entering this sort of new way of approaching relationships. Simone says while she's open to dating, being solo gives her more time for self-discovery and activities that bring her joy. I started training Muay Thai. I started skateboarding. I started writing poetry. There's definitely freedom in being alone. The solo pride movement isn't just a fad. Today, it's projected that one in four millennials will never get married. And studies show there are some benefits. Compared to married people, singles exercise more, have more friends, and are more likely to volunteer in their community. When another study compared 10,000 women in their 70s, it found those who were single and never married were physically the healthiest, least stressed, and most optimistic. Let me ask you, though, so many young women tell me, like, oh, my God, when you turn 30, if you are single, solo, whatever the word is, people look at you and go, like, oh, my God, where is your other half? Where's your partner? How do you push back against that? I definitely think there's more of a stigma for women, especially. People immediately default to, like, you're not going to have enough money and you're not going to have enough things to sustain yourself or to go through retirement. And like, there are all of these assumptions. Assumptions that critics say have led to legalized discrimination against singles. This idea that single people don't have anyone, that we're unattached, we're alone in the world, that idea becomes represented in law. In her book, Singled Out, researcher Bella DiPaolo documents how single men are paid less than married men for the same work and singles are ineligible for marriage discounts on taxes and insurance. Sometimes employers will let a married person put their spouse on their health care plan. Well, I can't put my best friend or somebody who's really important to me. Welcome to the solo slot. To empower singles and give them a voice, Peter McGraw is organizing solo salons like these across the country. He's also working on a new book appropriately called Solo, The Single Person's Guide to a Remarkable Life. Do you find that people have to fight mm -hmm. for their storyline, that they're happy and single? Absolutely. So why is it that when you ask a married person, are you happy? And they say yes, you believe them. And then when someone asks a single person, are you happy? And they say yes, there's still some doubt there. If someone says they're happy, Trust them because there's many ways to be happy in life. This was an incredible story. And personally, I mean, I was single for 43 years, basically. Yeah. So I related to a lot of the 
What could we do, though, as a culture to not have this stigma on singles? Because I yeah. did feel a lot of the things that they would say, like I'd get invited somewhere or someone would be like, oh, you're not with anybody. Mm. Yeah, like, do you have someone special? Like, I think his point was they don't always ask that to the first question. Do you have someone? If you don't, people always go, well, why don't you? What do you think right. that is? What's and wrong with her? Just, yeah, ask, you know, what brings you joy? How's your work? How's your family? Other questions. There's so many other things mm. to ask people other than do you have a significant other? And if if you don't, why don't you? It's such a great discussion. And yeah. I hope stories like this start to change the narrative um, around the country. It's yeah. so good. All right, Maria, thank you. Thank Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.